Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over question 7 from the Compound Data 2 workshop. So in this question, similar to some of the previous loop and compound data questions we've done, we have um, some values that we want to assign to an array and we need to work out what that pattern is so that we can do it using a loop and in this case it's a nested loop um, and it needs to be done so it can work for any size of array. Um, that's what they have in this note, you don't need to use the size of the array. So again, that's just to encourage you to, um, oh, wrong button, there we go. That's just to encourage you to not hard code your condition when you're writing your loop. So I've already written my loops over here. Um, I've just created a random integer array, a two dimensional array, sorry, um, with size five by eight. Um, but you can do whatever you want. And this is the loop that we're going to use. Because we have two dimensions of arrays that we need to go through, there are two nested loops that we need. So we need this outer loop here, which is that standard loop that goes through just a regular array, and that will go through that main array. So in this case, or in my case, the array of five um, places. And then what I need is a nested loop that will go through each individual subarray in each of those um, five array sections in the main array. Um, so this is that loop that you've seen many times now, um, so that should be familiar. And this is the part that I find people get stuck with. Um, it's a very similar loop, but the condition is different. The condition says that M, which is um, representing the index of our subarray, um, m must be less than ri dot length. So that is referring to the length of the current subarray that you're in. Um, so that's really important to have that there and it's often something that people um, forget to put in their loop and because of that they tend to get some index out of bounds exceptions which we don't want. Okay so again um, what we want to do here is having a look at our indexes, here we have two, we have the main array index and we have the subarray index. Um, we want to have a look at each individual index and see if we can find a pattern with them um, or a relationship between an index and the value. Um, and it's sort of easier but also sort of harder um, because you've got two indexes to consider now so in some ways that makes it easier because you have more options but also um, just imagining it in your head and trying to get an understanding of what's happening in the loop can be a bit tricky. So um, I've got my table up over here um, and I'm going to write down my patterns. So let's have a look at 7.1 first. Um, when our indexes are 0, 0, the value is 0, 0, 1 at 0, 0, 2 at 0. Let's have a look at 1. That's 1, 1, 1. Two, two. I've missed one down the bottom here. Two. So here we want to rewrite all of our values in terms of i, in terms of m, or a combination of the two. Um, so if we have a look closely at this one here, you'll notice that whatever the i value is, or whatever the main array index is, um, is whatever the value is. So this is quite a straightforward one. Um, we can just say that the value is equal to i. Because if you compare those two columns there, you'll see that they're equal. So 7.1 for each item, you've got i there. So what would that look like if we were going through memory? I might not do as big of an array, two-dimensional array as that one. Let's do, let's do three by two. Might be a bit messy. Oh goodness, that is very messy. Okay, so this is what our array looks like and I'll move this over here so we can trace it. So we've got i is equal to zero, i is less than array.length, i++. So i is referring to 
these in indexes here. So the first time we loop around, we're looking at i is equal to zero, which is this here, which means we're looking at this subarray. Once we're in that subarray, we need to loop through each of these um, values here. So for that, I've got m. I've got m is equal to zero. Oops. Um, m must be less than array i dot length. So i, well, sorry, wrong one. i is currently zero. Um, so array zero refers to this array here, and the length of that is two, um, and then m plus plus. So first of all, we've got i is equal to zero, m is equal to zero, and array zero zero, which is referring to this space here, is equal to i, and i is zero right now. Then we've got, we're stuck in this inner loop here. So that means that when we get to the end of this loop, we've got m plus plus, which means m is now equal to one, is one less than array i dot length. We said the length of this subarray here was two. So one is less than two is true. So we've got r zero one is equal to i, which is zero. Okay. Um, and then I get to the end of this subarray, and at this point I've got m plus plus, so now m is equal to two. We've got is two less than two, false, um, which means I'll get to the bottom of that, or I'll exit from this nested loop, I'll get to the bottom of my outer loop, where i plus plus. So that means that we are jumping out of this loop here, We've lost reference to M because remember M only exists in the scope that it was declared in and it was declared inside that inner loop and we've exited from the inner loop now. And then we've got I plus plus, so I was zero, we're plusing one, so now it's one, which means we're moving onto this one here. Um, so hopefully that's helping you visualize what's actually happening here. Um, and then of course we've got one is less than array dot length, the length of this array is three, so one is less than three, so we'll jump back down here to the inner loop where we've got m is equal to um, zero, and now because we are in this subarray, the m we are referring to are these here, or the index we're referring to. So again we've got that same loop, m is equal to zero, so we've got array one zero is equal to i, i is one, So we've got that there. Then m plus plus, so m is equal to one. So array one one is equal to one. And then at this point, m is equal to two, which means um, that inner loop has been terminated. We've lost our reference to m. It only exists within the scope of that nested loop. We've exited here, we've gotten to the end here, and we've got i plus plus. So i is no longer one, it's two. So you get the idea here, so I'll speed through this. Um, so I'm referring to this nested loop here. So M is referring to these indexes here. And I've got um, array two zeros equal to two. Loop around again, M plus plus. Array two one is equal to two. We've exited from our inner loop i plus plus, i is now equal to three, um, and that no longer meets this condition here, which means we're exiting from our outer loop. But that's okay because we've already assigned all of our values. So that's what's going on behind the scenes. So hopefully that's given you a better idea um, of what's happening. And with that, we can move on to 7.2. So 7.2, we've got 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. So a very similar situation here. Um, if we have a look at our second index here, we'll notice that all of these values are equal to 
whatever the array value is. So we can say that um, array im is equal to whatever m is. You can see that pattern there, it's the same value. So those two are a little more straightforward than the other ones. The other ones are a little bit tricky. They require um, a combination of the values. So let's have a look at the next one here. That next one I've got 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4. So this one isn't as straightforward and this requires a bit of trial and error, a combination of maybe the two indexes, maybe multiplying just one index. Um, you just want to try bits and pieces here. So I'm going to try um, i plus m, see how that goes. So 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 plus 2 is 2, 1 plus 0, 1 plus 1, 1 plus 2, 2 plus 0, 2 plus 1, 2 plus 2. Okay, great. So I found my, my, uh, what would you call it? Operation? That's probably not the right word, but you get what I'm talking about. Um, formula, maybe? I don't know. Um, if you, mul if you, not multiply, if you add the two indexes together, that's what your value is going to be. Um, so, Working out what that pattern is sometimes just requires a bit of um, testing, just having a look at the relationship between I, M and the value. And that also comes with practice and exposure to different uh, scenarios or different patterns. So that's that one there. And that last one is a little trickier. So let's remove these ones here. So I've got 0, 1, 2, 0, 2, 4, 0, 3, 6. Okay, so this one isn't as straightforward um, and it requires a bit more um, of analysing the values and the indexes here. Um, so if I have a look this way for each row, um, it looks like we're looking at times tables here. So 0, 1, 2, 0, 2, 4, 0, 3, 6. And I'd imagine if you keep going, you'll do the 1 times tables, 2 times tables, 3 times tables. Um, so maybe it has something to do with that. So if we have a look here, if these are the 1 times tables, this is 1 times 0, this is um, 1 times 1, this is 1 times 2. Have a look here, this is 2 times 0, 2 times 1, 2 times 2. Um, maybe I should be writing these down. Um, so 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 2 times 0, 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 0, 3 times 1, 3 times 2. So let's have a look if we can relate that to any indexes here. So if I have a look at these values here that I'm multiplying each number by, um, that is the same as our m value, our subarray index. So I've got part of it, um, but what I don't have is the first part of it, because if you have a look at i, um, in this case here, when i is 0, I'm looking at 1. When i is 1, I'm looking at 2. When i is 2, I'm looking at 3. Um, so I need a bit more unpacking here. Um, so I look at the relationship between I and that green value I've highlighted on the right. Um, and if you have a look at each of those situations, you can see that whatever the value is, is just I plus 1. So what I can do, is I'll replace this to um, 0 plus 1 times, well we know what it's, that it's M, so I'll just add M. Um, this is 0 plus 1 or maybe I won't do m, it's not as clear, times 0, it's 1, 0 plus 1, times 2, 1 plus 1, times 0,
Oops. Oops, goodness. I've made this table too small. Okay, so now what I have is for each of my I values, I've now got these as my I values. I've got these as my M values. And the remaining part of that uh, expression there, expression is probably the right word, um, is just plus one and a multiplication. So that's consistent for each of them. So I've worked out what my formula here is, and it is i plus one times m. Um, and you might have unpacked that, uh, and you've done m i plus m. That's fine as well, either one works. Maybe you found a different formula altogether. Either way is fine. Um, I'm gonna do this one here, so I'll say i plus one times m is my formula. So that one in particular is a lot more difficult. It requires a bit more time and testing and analyzing what the values could be. Um, so if you get a question like that, in an exam, sometimes it's helpful to have a piece of paper out so that you can draw maybe a table like this and test out some values with uh, a pencil and an eraser and you can um, just have a look at different combinations. And these are definitely the more difficult questions here, so um, would recommend having some practice of those. <laughs>